it's not about the ghosts that dogs can see. Well, most of us know that it is not true, right? We're here to debunk the more believable myths that are or can ruin your and your dog's lives. Well, well, the video is not that serious throughout. We'll get behind some of the silly misconceptions too. So, Pets Guide presents you the most common myths about dogs debunked. So, without wasting your precious time, let's get started. Are you one of those who believe you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Then think twice. In reality, it's quite the opposite. Training is equally similar to your senior dog as it is to your younger dog in terms of mental stimulation and attention. Although older dogs may not be able to sit or give a paw as quickly as pups, they still enjoy learning and being rewarded, and they will undoubtedly appreciate some extra bonding time. Another dog myth is that dogs may get a cold. In truth, dogs are susceptible to viruses such as leptoprosis and parvro, as well as bacterial illnesses like pneumonia, but not the common cold. Okay, this isn't really a myth. The majority of a dog's sweat glands are located around its paw pads. The primary method dogs cool down is through panting. The exchange of air permits their lungs moist lining to cool them. This means that dogs with poor air exchange, such as pugs and bulldogs will have a more difficult time cooling down when they grow hot and are more prone to heat stroke. The most offensive myth is that rescue dogs are bad because you don't know where they come from. You may not be able to learn the complete history of a rescue dog. However, I've seen numerous dogs in my field who were raised from puppies and are still violent, and many really friendly rescue dogs. Raising a dog from a puppy does not guarantee they will be problem free. Nowadays, many good rescuers put dogs through a battery of tests to see how they react to people, food, other dogs, children, and so on. On. So please give a chance to the rescued dogs. One of the worst dog myths is that dog owners think they can give ibuprofen to their dogs. Nope, ibuprofen is harmful to dogs and can cause liver and kidney damage. Some veterinarians will prescribe aspirin or Tylenol for dogs, but the dosage is quite exact and your dog might easily overdose on these medications. Only administer human medicine to your dog after first visiting a veterinarian. I guess you've heard that dogs have cleaner mouths than humans. Well, I've heard this since I was a child. It never really made sense, but I always believed it. However, that was extremely foolish of me and many who still believe it. Think about it. Dogs eat their own poo. Their mouths are full of bacteria and certainly they are dirty. The only counter argument can be that their mouths are contaminated with bacteria different from that of humans. Another popular misconception is that dogs cure themselves by licking their wounds. Remember how we discussed dogs on clean mouths? Consider all of that bacteria in that mouth being transmitted to the wound. Dogs are significantly more likely to promote infection and postpone healing in their wounds by licking them. Therefore, don't let them. People also believe that a dog may cry out if it's in pain. Vets frequently see people bring their dogs into the vet's clinic for limping, and one of the first things they usually say is, she doesn't seem to be in pain. The next question is, well, why do you think she's limping? It is simple. Limping is indicative of pain. Your dog won't come to you crying. In fact, many species will try to hide their discomfort to defend themselves from predators. It is critical to monitor your dog's behavior for changing changes that indicate pain. It's a controversial argument that you do not need to vaccinate your dog. While vaccinations have recently been the subject of much controversy, the rabies virus is also a human health concern. Most states mandate that your dog be vaccinated against rabies. In addition, if you ever wish to bring your dog to puppy class or a boarding facility, he or she will need certain vaccinations. If you have any questions or concerns regarding vaccinating your dog, you should always contact your veterinarian to complete the best course of action for your pet and lifestyle. The most common myth is that dogs wag their tails when they're happy. Well, there's more to that. Dogs communicate both audibly and through body language, which includes signals sent out by their tails. The sight of a dog wagging its tail is connected with happiness. Nevertheless, it is a prevalent dog fallacy that all wagging tails are always pleasant. Scientists have been researching dog body language for decades, and they've discovered some characteristics of canine behavior that do not necessarily correspond 
respond to general awareness among pet owners. Dogs can express various emotions through tail wags depending on their location and wagging pace. For example, a slight and slow wag can be used for considering an initial greeting, and depending on the other dog's response, it can quickly change to a broader let's be friends wag, slow down to a high held tail with almost no wag, I'm challenging you, or down to between the legs with a quick wag, I submit, we're cool. I almost believed this myth that a dog's dry nose indicates illness. Although a dry nose can be one of the indications of disease, it does not always imply that your dog is sick. A dog's nose naturally becomes dry, such as when they sleep. Thus, an older dog who sleeps a lot would always have a drier nose than a puppy. It's also possible that the dog has allergies or has been out in the sun and became sunburned. Meanwhile, here's a quick dog fact. A person is twice more likely to die from a bee, wasp, or a hornet sting than a dog bite. Additionally, according to dog bite stats, people have a 1 in 118,778 chance of dying because of a dog attack. Is it true that the dogs eat grass when they're sick? Dogs indeed tend to eat grass and then vomit, which is thought to be due to an unsettled stomach. However, research indicates that only a small percentage will vomit after eating grass. Some dogs enjoy the taste of grass, particularly new spring growth, and graze like cows if allowed. Your dog may also be prone to pica, a condition in which the dog eats stones and mud. This could be due to a nutritional shortage gastrointestinal sensitivity, or boredom. If it's the latter, or your dog is continually eating grass to vomit, you should take him to the vet to rule out any stomach problems or underlying illnesses. Many people believe that big dogs can't live in apartments, and this isn't entirely correct. When you adopt a dog, you must evaluate what type of environment or house you can provide for them. Some huge breed dogs are extremely energetic, clumsy, and drool profusely, which does not work well in a tiny apartment where they could cause damage. However, the belief that the larger the breed, the less comfortable the dog will be in an apartment must be more accurate. The dog's physical and mental stimulation must determine whether he or she is a good fit for apartment living. Some medium-sized dogs are unsuitable for apartment living, although many giant breeds enjoy living in apartments and condos. So that was it for today. Hope you learned something useful from the video. Like and share if you did, and comment to motivate us to make more of these videos. Subscribe to the channel for interesting videos about dogs and the pet world. We'll be back with more awesome videos soon. Till then, keep spreading love.